Hello and uh, welcome back. So today we've come to the Knavesmire which is at York Racecourse for another classic car show and it's uh, going to be the last one of the season. Um, setting off this morning uh, it was touch and go whether we came or not because the weather was very overcast, didn't look very promising but we thought let's get out and make the effort anyway so we'll have a look and see what today brings. So today we're also on a bit of a mission because I'm hoping to see an E-Type Jaguar 421 RDT. If we do, let's see what happens. Now, as with most good stories, we need to start at the beginning. And to do that, we need to go back to a visit that we made to Castle Howard back in June this year. So just to recap, you'll see me making my way along a line of cars, passing an Excalibur, which was first owned by Tony Curtis. And then I have to negotiate a group of people who stop close to an E-Type Jaguar. And so consequently, I continue walking. So what's important about that? Well, shortly after publishing the Castle Howard video, I received a comment from a viewer who stated I'd passed an E-Type he'd once owned. And he was disappointed as I hadn't given it a second glance. It was obvious he'd love to have seen some pictures. And I replied to say that I'd keep an eye out for it when visiting other shows this year. And that if I saw it, I'd try and capture some images. And if the owner was around, I'd see if I could have a word and find out what I could for him. He further commented to say, if you go to the York Classic Car Show, it's highly likely that you'll see it there. So did I find it? Of course I did, otherwise he wouldn't be watching this now. But that said, I thought I was going to be out of luck because it wasn't until later in the day that I actually found it. And initially I thought perhaps it might have been with the Jaguar Club. But no, and it wasn't until after making my way back from looking at the commercial vehicles, I just managed to spot it tucked away. And as is usually the case by now, I was struggling for battery power and I was having to manage my recording very carefully. It's just typical, isn't it? When I first found the car, I looked around, but I couldn't find anyone present with it. But undeterred, I made a few return journeys. And it was on my final visit, it appeared that I was still out of luck. However, I took the opportunity to get a few more pictures. And while taking them, uh, a gentleman appeared to be taking an interest in the car. So I waited because I didn't want to disturb him. And I let him have a look at the car. And when he'd finished, I took the pictures. But I was a bit disappointed because I'd really wanted to speak to the owner. And I said to somebody, I'd like to try and find the owner if I can. But I was so engrossed in taking the pictures, I didn't quite grasp or understand the comment made to me. And then suddenly the light dawned and it appeared that the gentleman that I thought was another car enthusiast was in fact the owner. So I asked him if it was possible to speak to him about his car, which he was more than happy to oblige. And I told him how the interest had been sparked following his visit to Castle Howard and the contact made by the previous owner. But before we get into that, I'm going to let you have a look at the car. first question posed was, how long have you owned the car and when did you purchase it? Since 1984 was his reply. Now that's good because I now knew that I was speaking to the same person that the previous owner had when he'd met this gentleman at the car show back in the 1990s. I then asked him 
did you know what colour the car was originally? And he said, oh, I know it's not the original colour. Originally, it was calm and red. I said, that's right. He said, the heritage certificate told me this. And I was able to confirm that the previous owner told me it started out in calm and red with black leather upholstery. And it was the friend who bought it from him that changed the colour to what it is now. And the upholstery was changed to oatmeal. I then went on to tell him what the previous owner told me. And that was that he'd bought the car in 1971 for £600. And after just a few months, the clutch started to slip and he couldn't afford to have it fixed. So he then sold it to a garage owner friend who fully restored the car and ran it for about 10 years before selling it to the present owner. He said, I bumped into him at York Classic Car Show in the 1990s. When I told him I once owned it, he looked at me stupid and said, no, I don't think so. I've had it for the last 15 years. I replied, did you buy it from Peter Kennett in Huddersfield? That's when he believed me and we had a good chat. Now, £600 may not seem like a lot of money today, but to put that into context, back then you could buy a nice four bedroom house for between two and a half to three thousand pounds. So it was quite a substantial amount. He also went on to say, I bought, owned and sold the car in Huddersfield, where I lived until the age of 24, before moving to York, which is where I saw it again some 20 years later. I moved to Market Wayton in 2001 and I saw it twice on the A1079 Hull to York Road. I moved to Lincoln in 2012 and saw internet photos of it displayed at the Lincolnshire Shore, only two miles from where I live. The car's been following me around. And the current owner confirmed the colour to be regal red. And when asked had he had to carry out any work since he'd purchased it, he said he'd had to replace the floors and I think he said he'd fitted a five-speed gearbox and he'd brought the paintwork up to standard when needed. He said, I take the car down to Lincoln Traction Engine Rally every year. And I said, so if he wants to see it, he knows where to go. He then went on to tell me that when he bought the car, he tried to obtain details of previous ownership from DVLA, which he could do back then. And he said, I sent off my cheque for five pounds, but unfortunately they were unable to find any records. So they sent the cheque back. But he also went on to tell me um, that he'd spoken to someone who'd known the car from new and I understand it was purchased new by a builder in Doncaster. It was great to discover after all these years, 39, it was still in the hands of the current owner, being loved, enjoyed to the full and used for its intended purpose of providing fun motoring. It's also good to know that it's survived as many haven't. Thanks to both the owners for sharing the story with me.